Hello and welcome to another video from Double RL. Uh, this is another 15 minutes of modeling video and today is Wednesday, November 27th, 2019. Uh, so today what we're doing is I've got this um, 3D printed uh, coal bunker and uh, I've already painted it and I'll explain exactly what I did uh, to get it from uh, this color uh, to this color. But um, earlier this month, I mentioned that I was going to go and experiment with different types of 3D printing material. And so the material for November was wood PLA. And um, this is a product from Hatchbox. It's basically about 60, 70% plastic and about um, you know, 30, 40% wood particles. And they're very fine wood particles. They go through the 0.4 nozzle without any problems. Um, but the smell you get and the texture that you get um, after it's printing is basically like wood. It, you can't tell the difference. Um, you know, I hand some of the stuff to some people and they think it's being carved rather than uh, 3D printed, uh, which is kind of cool. So one of the issues though with printing with wood PLA is that um, it, it's more difficult to get finer details. So like some finer details I can get, others where it has to move the nozzle over a little bit, it can be difficult. So for example, to try to get the gap between the planks just because of the particles that are in the wood and um, I was finding that it was filling the, the lines uh, quite difficult you know quite regularly and not only could you not really get the the lines out completely you can get them completely clear um, just because of the way the particles were, were falling inside of it so what I ended up doing instead was I, I changed the technique so I wanted a thing to look like um, you know a cold wooden coal bunker and so I got the idea of offsetting each of the panels about 0.25 to 0.45 millimeters. So if you look here, and um, they actually go up and down um, along the, the X, Y axis. So you can see um, they're just look offset just a little bit. And that's enough for the printer to handle without any problems and uh, with the wood PLA. And uh, normal PLA, it wouldn't have been an issue. But with the wood PLA, like I said, because of the particles in it, it made it a little trickier. So this offsetting works really, really well, and you can get actually much finer detailing than you would normally get out of the FDM printer. And so what I did was once I had um, offset it enough and figured out the minimal amount of offset to get the effect, um, I went ahead and printed out the uh, the paneling. Now it does, you can kind of sort of see the effect it has on the side. It's not quite as cool as the effect here, but um, it works out pretty well uh, when you're looking at it on the layout from a distance, so it's um, it's pretty slick. Um, so to get this kind of wooden colored effect, um, first of all, the wood PLA actually behaves like wood, so it kind of absorbs paint and produces a texture that's really, really, really uh, close to wood. So uh, what I was able to do was I painted the whole thing um, with this uh, rust brown color, um, either brown oxide or I think I used uh, testers actual rust color so it's kind of a very bright um, brown color and you can sort of still see it in a few places and then what I did was while it was still wet um, I went over it with a uh, flat gray color also from text tex uh, testers and um, that was in both of those were enamel paints and um, after I had let those dry I went over the top of it um, with some black paint and I did a mix of um, kind of dry brushing and sort of less paint on the brush brushing kind of way to do it. So dry brushing is where you take the paintbrush and you basically take off most of the paint and then just uh, uh, use it for highlighting and stuff. And then I sort of did that, but I also added a little bit more black to it than I would normally if I was just dry brushing it. And it's come out with a pretty cool effect. And then what I finally did was I ran over all of the panel lining with the uh, my favorite uh, Tamiya panel line accent color in dark brown. And you can sort of see where it pulled up a little bit at the bottom. Um, I did notice with the Tamiya stuff, and I don't know if it was because of the enamel paint or the actual texture on the material, but I had to almost brush it down in a few places uh, to get it to flow or use about twice as much as I would normally use. Anyway, so what we're going to do in today's video is um, I'm going to kind of continue this. So I'm going to go and do a little bit more uh, dry brushing with the black paint 
and I'm also going to use a couple of products. So this is what I had left of the black cinder um, ballast from Woodland Scenics. Um, I'm going to go and use this kind of as a base for, for some of this, start to fill it up. And then I'm, I've also got some Woodland Scenics um, coal products. I believe this is a fine coal and I've got a kind of a medium. And then I'm going to top it off with uh, the more premium and expensive uh, coal loads from Hatton's. So this is Hatton's uh, coarse and their, their medium coal loads. So you can sort of see there, uh, that's the medium uh, coal load. And then this is the coarse coal load. So I'm gonna put the medium on f maybe um, on top of the coarse because the coarse, the largest stuff you'd have kind of underneath the bunker anyway. So um, it will overflow a bit, but I'm not gonna fill it up the whole way. So I'm gonna kind of fill it up to, uh, to the edge here a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is basically spray it and uh, put some glue on it. And then once it's dried, I'm going to take it over to the layout and then top it off with uh, some of the Hatton's medium to actually get that kind of overflowing effect that you would see on the layout. Um, I didn't want to do it here because it meant I'd have to paint some card and then color it in and glue it and so on. All right, so let me get stuff prepared and we'll go from there. Okay, so if you're following along, like I said, I just told you what I was going to use, but um, here's the black paint from Testers. You're going to need something to mix the paint with. Uh, you're also going to need some paintbrushes, uh, some PVA type glue. Uh, I'm using a missing bottle with some IPA in it uh, to penetrate the um, the material so the glue can soak into it. And I've then I got a, a bit of water PA mix that was uh, left over from yesterday's projects. All right, so what we're going to start off with is uh, giving the paint a bit of a shake. And now, if you want this 3D printed uh, trackside 3D thing, um, right now you can. Um, You'll be able to download it from Trackside 3D over the weekend. Um, we have a new store that's opening up uh, with all the new products and stuff on it. Um, it's a big task, but we should have it finished by the weekend or during the weekend. So keep an eye out on the Double O Rail website or this channel or over at our, our Facebook page uh, to find out when that happens. And then you can just download this and print it out. If you want to, uh, don't have a 3D printer, but you still want it printed out. Um, the new licensing that we have uh, coming out this weekend on all of our products, you can actually take download the file, buy it, and then take it somewhere else to get it printed as long as you're only printing it for your personal use. And you need to give a copy to license to the people um, who are printing it for you. So you can take it to iMaterialize, you can take it to a local company, you could even upload it to Shipways as long as it's just for your private use and you don't try to sell it on or something like that. If you do want to sell them on, we do have a program coming out. Uh, so keep an eye on out for that as well. Um, a lot of model shops have been asking us um, how they could go about selling the stuff that are pre-printed. So we're, uh, we're working on that. All right, so I'm gonna take some of the black paint here. And then uh, what I've got is an index card. Now I use these index cards um, for doing something on the 3D printing called bed leveling. And so um, I have a whole bunch of them that are kind of just scratched up that aren't any good anymore for 3D printing, but they're still perfectly fine for um, getting some paint off here for the dry brushing. And then you just take the the brush and, and okay, I didn't dry brush it enough. Um, so um, if something like this happens, probably the quickest and easiest thing to do is you fix it, is to clean off some of the paint. So you just take a kitchen towel like this, not a big deal, and just quickly rub it off like that, and we're good to go, right? So it's not a big deal. You know, sometimes people make mistakes. Uh, even people with YouTube channels make mistakes, so um, it's not a not a big deal. Uh, obviously, what had happened there was I had not cleaned the brush off properly. Uh, we must have cleaned it off on just one side. And we'll try this again. So
I know the trick is this is still kind of heavy for my liking, so I'm going to take the uh, IPA mist here. Just give it a quick splash like that. And we'll take the paintbrush and it should kind of water it down a little bit. Hopefully. There you go. You can see there, that's more of the effect um, that I was trying to get, so it's, uh, it's all good. So on the back here, pretty much same kind of deal, just... You want it to be kind of almost grungy looking rather than gloss brown. All right, so I think we've done a fair amount. Oh, actually, you know what? This side here looks way, way too clean. So um, I think I'm gonna show you how to do this with a panel line color. Uh, just show you a couple of different techniques. So with the panel line color, so we just give it a good shake. Uh, this stuff is actually pretty gnarly in terms of uh, smell. So just be aware of that when you uh, are messing with it. And then usually what happens is you just take the tip of it here and it runs down. But you can see um, with this, you gotta use a little bit more than you would probably normally uh, just to make it run. And even then it doesn't really wanna run. I believe that's because of the paint. Um, so what I ended up having to do with the previous ones is just taking the brush like this and running it down. Now this will it's just like weathering powder, so it'll it'll dry a little lighter than what you've put it on. And you really just want to use it to um, to kind of tone down the color a bit, because that red-ish brown rust color um, is a little bit too bright for the effect I'm trying to get here. And one thing to be careful of, it will highlight down the bottom here, so um, if that's not what you want, just be careful of that. And there you go, you can see it's been pretty much darkened. Now that will dry a little bit brighter, but not that much brighter. Oops, I keep knocking the camera. Okay, so next up, we want to start to put the cool stuff in. And so before I put the cool in there, I'm going to just take the paintbrush here. Dip it in the black paint, and I'm not going to do the whole thing, but I'm just going to sort of just want to darken the really bright uh, PLA tan color that's here because in reality this would be much darker uh, from all the coal being on it for so long. Um, and don't worry about, I'm not even going to let this dry, so I'm just going to dump. Uh, glue on top of this in a minute. Um, you can see there the painting's not even perfect, right? It's not, you know, left it out close to the edge and so on, so it's not a big deal. Alright, so I'm going to set the paint aside trying to spill it. And next thing we're going to do is uh, give the glue here a bit of a shake. And then uh, just not a whole lot, but um, I usually go with a kind of a zigzag pattern to try to or try to write the letter M. Alright, there you go. Then what you can do is save this is a disposable paintbrush, so it's not a big deal. Just sort of mix the glue in with the paint here. I'm sure there's somebody who's having a fit that I'm doing this right now, but that's all right. By the way, if I'm doing this wrong and there's a better way to do it, um, you know, please put that in the comments below, or if you've got another way of doing it, 
Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of ways to do this. Okay, so don't put that back in the paint though, just remember to <laughs> be bad. <coughs> Alright, so next up I've got the um, Woodland Scenics uh, Cinder Ballast here. And the reason I'm using this as a base is because it's way cheaper than the other stuff um, from Hattons or from Woodland Scenics or from other companies, right? So you just want to start off with a base. Like so. Now remember what I said, um, we just want to, I'm going to tap that down a little bit. Kind of angle it up and then tap it down. I'll give you that, that kind of cool effect that you're looking for. Um, so what we'll do is we're going to take, we have to do this in layers, just so I figured it's probably obvious, but just in case it's not. So this is IP alcohol. Um, Okay, and then next up, by the way, this starts to smell funny, so you want to soak it. Now this is just to get the layer we just put on there kind of saturated a bit. Okay, so next up you could use uh, the coarse or you could use more of the um, loot there, but what I'm going to use is I have this stuff I bought years ago and I want to try to use it up because the hat and stuff is a lot better and I want to use the hat and stuff for cool loads but this is a sort of a you can sort of see there um, you can sort of almost see the smoke coming off of it too okay or dust so again, you uh, just want to gently tap it. Now, I'm going to take, because I don't want to waste anything here, uh, I'm going to take this and just kind of pour it in on top there. Okay, and then I'm going to mix in some more of the Woodland Scenics. Not a whole lot, just enough to add some dust to it. Okay, and then what we do is we add some more IPA. And don't worry, this is going to get messy, so. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the coarse um, hat and stuff. And before I do that, I'm going to... Again, tap that backwards and flip this over. All right, so the fun part. Now, you can see there I didn't use a whole lot, and you do not need to use Now, 
things to do. It's already wanting to fall out. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to prop this up with my paintbrush. So I'm going to take my paintbrush and just put it under there so that it doesn't fall out. And then I'm going to take the bits that have fallen out and stick it in there. Now, the tricky part is going to get to glue this without it um, causing me trouble. So, I'm going to take the IPA again, and then from a bit of a distance this time. I'm going to give it a good soak. I may want to wear a mask like this if um, if you, any of this stuff agitates you, but what we're going to do next is then just if I almost pour this, i be very careful about that thing. Yeah, I don't want to pour it. I'm using a cheap spray bottle and I think I probably should have invested in a Okay, and then finally, I'm going to take the Hatton's medium uh, load here, and you can seriously see what it looks like, and then very and very carefully, just sprinkle it over the top here. Now I'm going to use more of this and maybe a little bit more of the um, coarse stuff uh, when I glue it into the layout. But for now, uh, that's the effect that I'm going to go for. And if I just Tamping it down a little bit with my finger, it sh should sit in there with the glue. And then finally, for good measure, just a bit of a tap, like so. All right, so around here I've got some excess glue. I think I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit more in. So, all right, so that is it for now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this dry and then um, I will, in a day or two, uh, take it over to the layout and we'll, um, we'll go um, put another uh, course of maybe the course load and maybe some of the medium on it where it's in place. And um, other than that, it's looking, looking pretty good. So um, that's it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next